Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. It is a sunny and bright day here in Austin, Texas. Texas, which is great because for the last two weeks we've had nothing but clouds and rain. My grass is so long. I'm even starting to get mushrooms actually in my backyard, but not the good kind. So I'm going to have to cut my yard some point within the next day or so. Not today though, because like I said, it is sunny. I do have the day off. So after I'm done with this, I might go out, find a nice sunny spot to have a couple beers, relax and enjoy this day couple things to talk about today of course the captain marvel trailer dropped a couple hours ago so i'm gonna get to that in just a minute venom got the pg-13 rating and we got our first pictures from todd phillips joker film starring joaquin phoenix i'm gonna talk about that but first last night guys was the emmys i'm a big fan of the emmys and the oscars i mean they're the most legit when it comes to award shows, the Grammys, the Oscars, the Emmys, those are the legit for each business. And for the Emmys, it's for television. I'm actually a bigger television guy than I am movie guy. I watch a lot of both, but I enjoy television more just because of the long form storytelling. I think you can tell better stories, get to know the characters more, and get more invested. So, and last night, the one and only Game of Thrones took a couple of awards. First, Peter Dinklage took home the Best Supporting Actor Award again. Great, awesome, love me some Dinklage. And Game of Thrones took home the Award of the Night, Best Drama. Little surprise, but I think it's awesome. Unfortunately, they're going to have to wait a little while to get that award again because it's a year and a half in between seasons since they're taking so long. So like the next Emmys... They're not going to be eligible, I think, for this next season because it hasn't been aired yet. It won't be aired in time. So it's going to be two years before that last season of Game of Thrones is nominated for Emmys, which I think, honestly, given it's the last season, they'll probably win again as long as it's not horrible. I don't think it will be. But in any event, Game of Thrones winning best drama. That's awesome. All right, guys, let's get to the main topic today. So yesterday, it was kind of teased that Brie Larson was going to be on Good Morning America this morning to announce or introduce the first official teaser trailer for Captain Marvel, the newest Marvel Studio film that is coming out in March. looks like they were at the uh, National Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian. That's cool. I've been there. That's really cool. So it's cool that they announced it there, being the fact that, of course, Captain Marvel, being a character of the space Uh, that they announced it and did all that there. That's pretty cool. But the trailer is about two minutes long. And to be honest, it's okay. You know, I didn't love it. Uh, It gave us a little bit, or a little taste of what we're going to get. So I'm just going to go through it right now real quick. I'm watching it right in front of me. And we start off, we have Captain Marvel falling through the roof. And as we pan down, we learn it's blockbuster video she lands in. And this, of course, sets up the theme that we're going to be going backwards, obviously, because blockbuster videos aren't really around nowadays. We know we're looking at least probably in the early 2000s to 90s, and this movie is set in the 1990s. And she gets up, and she's looking a little lost, like she doesn't know where she is. She's inside the mall, and she's kind of looking at people like she has no idea what this is. And in the background, you have... Nick Fury, played by Samuel Jackson, talking about a renegade agent. And he's like, I know one when I see one. Or something paraphrased like that. This scene in the hallway looks like they're probably going into S.H.I.E.L.D. There's a picture of the operating table. Looks like there's a scroll on the slab. Got spaceships, car chases. She's doing her plasma beam firing on the train. And then there's that scene here where... You finally see Samuel Jackson as a young Nick Fury. Truth be told, I was ready to hang it up before today. Really, I think it comes down to that Samuel Jackson's character, Nick Fury, 
meeting Captain Marvel is going to change his life. So here's kind of what I'm guessing from this whole storyline. This is, again, just me guessing as far as how it's going to go down. Captain Marvel falls to Earth. Why is she here? Because she's working for the Kree. And guess who's on Earth? The Skrulls. Obviously, enemy of the Kree, so she's here hunting scrolls. She runs into Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. and, of course, changes his life to where I feel like he's going to want or start to put together the Avengers Initiative to ward off these galactic threats he feel is coming. And with, as far as Captain Marvel, she comes back to Earth not really knowing who she was or remembering who she was. I feel like it's almost going to be kind of like a flashback. I was watching Batman Begins yesterday, and he had the flashbacks of him as a child, as you know the story's going through. Same thing with Deadpool; you had kept getting the flashbacks as the story went on. I feel like we're going to get something like that in this movie, where you had the regular story where she's coming back to Earth, and then she starts remembering who she was. She remembers her childhood and possibly how she became Captain Marvel, how she became the be this warrior in the Kree army. We also get a shot in this trailer of Jude Law as Marvel. He's got some weird eyes going on. He's part of the Kree. He's the one that really gives Carol her powers. Not sure how it's going to go down, but I think, you know, he takes her under his wing and takes her off of Earth. And I don't know if they mess with her memories, perhaps, which is why she can't remember, you know, her childhood and all that. But she comes back and I think she starts to remember stuff, which means she has some kind of amnesia going on. <laughs> and there it is, the granny shot, as I call it, where she's on the train and she punches this old lady. Now, I know it's probably a scroll, a shape-shifting alien. Other people who don't know that are probably like, what the hell? It's a scroll, people. It's not actually a grandma. Brie Larson or Captain Marvel would never hit a grandma unless it was, you know, a super threat. And you can get shots of old characters. You got a back shot here of Ronan the Accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy. He's going to be in this one because, again, he is a member of the Kree army, at least at this time. You get a shot of Phil Coulson. That's right, our favorite agent from Phase 1 in Marvel Studios. He's got a little more hair, which says he's maybe a little younger in this one and then nick fury breaking out the pager classic 90s there maybe i'm thinking this is going to be the same pager that he modifies to be able to contact captain marvel at the end of avengers infinity war oh i love this shot this shot of captain marvel in her classic like battle gear where she's got the mask on that's something she wears quite a lot now I know in the comics when she's going into fierce battle mode, I guess you would call it. And I really love the editing shot they did here with her where she goes from little kid to army training to crashed pilot, it looks like, to Captain Marvel. And then this very end shot here, you get her all powered up in the classic Captain Marvel outfit. It's very reminiscent in my eyes to that Wonder Woman shot we get in the trailer with Gal Gadot about ready to take out Ares and she's like calling on the lightning and the power. I think it's going to be one of those moments there where Carol is going to summon her full force and Nick Fury of course is going to see it, realize what she can do and is why he calls her to help at the end of Infinity War. Now, the film comes out in March. That's just a couple months before Avengers 4, which Captain Marvel is said to be a part of. This is kind of going to hopefully fill in some more blanks for us as to who Captain Marvel is and why she, Nick Fury called her, why she's so important. And I think she's going to be very important for the Marvel Universe going forward. I'm excited to see this film. I know you're excited to see this film. If nothing else, just as a fan of the Marvel films, Marvel has earned our trust at this point. And the directors, they have directed that film, Hal Nelson, I believe it was, with Ryan Gosling. I never saw it. I heard it was decent. I don't know about these directors, but, you know, it's Marvel Studios. It's Kevin Feige. You got a great lead with Brie Larson. Great supporting cast. I'm hoping for some really good 90s nostalgia with this. And again, just filling in more of those pieces. Give us more of the story of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and prepare us 
for Avengers 4. So it was a good trailer. You know, it wasn't phenomenal. I didn't geek out. But then again, I'm not a big Captain Marvel fan. I like the character. I don't love her. But in any event, it's great, guys. If you haven't checked it out, go do so. It's on YouTube. It's probably going to be everywhere today. And then fire back on the social media groups and Gmail account and let me know what you think. All right, next up, uh, Warner Brothers has posted the first couple of pictures from Todd Phillips' film, The Joker, or I guess Joker Origin. I don't know what they're calling it yet. Maybe they don't have a name yet, but it's Joaquin Phoenix as the person we're going to know as the Joker in the DC Universe. In this, he's got a couple, a little bit of long hair. He's bopping the nose of a clown, it looks like. And, you know, it's very basic and very simple. Some people criticized it. Some people, you know, loved it. I could go either way. It's just a picture in my eyes, you know. It's just a picture. If I were to judge it just solely on this, not a big fan of it. But then again, I'm not a big fan of the Joker getting his own film either. So, it is what it is. The funny thing about this is that they confirm that the Joker, his name before he was the Joker is going to be named Arthur Flick. Flip? Yeah, Arthur Fleck. That's what it is. Normally, you have the character Jack Napier who becomes the Joker. This one, they change his name completely. Makes me think maybe we're getting a little bit of a twist, perhaps. Just my thoughts on that. But also, of course, people are making the comparisons that it's A. Fleck. Affleck. Get it? Ben Affleck, Batman. We get it. The play on the words there. If that's what they're trying to do, I think that's stupid. Why would you do that? Whatever. But again, it's just a picture. You got to wait till the trailer, guys. When a trailer pops up and more photos pop up, then you can get a full judgment on it. For now, it's just pictures. I don't think they're great. But then again, I'm not super excited about the film either. And finally today, guys, speaking of movies I'm not super excited for, Sony released last week the official rating for their upcoming Venom film, and it's going to be PG-13. Now, if I remember correctly, when this film first started, Sony and the director, Ruben Flesher, were thinking for an R rating. And of course, brain dead fans were like, everything's better with R rating. It's not, okay? It's it's not. I could go into, you know, a whole 20 minute to 30 minute dialogue about why it's not. But nonetheless, I do find it a little peculiar that they got everyone hyped on this film that saying that you're going to have a little edgier Venom with an R rating. And I knew all along it was going to be PG-13, mainly because if at any point Sony decides to bring Spider-Man back into this universe that they're planning, they need to make it PG-13. And really, when it comes to an R rating, a lot of films are R rated, not because of the violence, mainly because of language and nudity um, is what contributes. Because if you look at movies like, say, The Avengers or Star Wars, that's a lot of violence. And if you look at, say, um, the film The Wolverine, even, with Hugh Jackman, there was the unrated cut and the theatrical cut. And really, the main difference between it was when... Hugh Jackman sliced somebody with his claws, you saw blood. And in the theatrical cut, you didn't see the blood. And that goes from just an unrated to an R cut. Now, speaking of unrated, Flesher said to Fandango that he doesn't rule out possibly doing an unrated cut or releasing an unrated cut of the movie. He said, I don't rule anything out. We'll have to see where it lands, I guess, but I won't rule anything out. Now, this kind of seems peculiar to me because Warner Brothers has been doing this with their films, where they started off with Batman v Superman, and the theatrical cut sucked. The ultimate cut ruled. Then they get to Suicide Squad, and they release a different Blu-ray version, like with extra scenes before we got in theaters. But the thing is, they're planning these things before the movie is even released. So they're telling us, hey, you know that movie that you're excited to see? It's not the full movie, guys. You're going to have to see the full movie on Blu-ray. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that was a horrible laugh, I know. But I don't like that. You know, if you want to put out an extended cut on the Blu-ray, I get it. But don't tease us saying, hey, that movie you're going to pay 15 or $20 to see, it's not going to be complete. But you're going to pay another $20 later on to watch the complete version. 
don't tell us that. That that makes me less excited to see the film in theaters. Now, I haven't bought my Venom tickets yet. I'm planning on doing it soon. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. I know tickets went on sale this last week, so I'm going to do it soon. And again, not super excited for the film, mainly because I'm not a Venom fan. I'm hoping it'll be good. Um, definitely hoping it'll be good. Why? Because I want Spider-Man to stay in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the better this film is, the more they feel like they can build a film cinematic universe without Spider-Man, the more likely they are to renew their deal with Marvel and keep Tom Holland, Spider-Man, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where I think he just works great. So that's my opinion. All right, guys. Well, that is it for me today. Time for you to fire back on the Facebook group and Twitter account. Let me know what you think, of course. Dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. What would you think of the Captain Marvel trailer? Head over to the Facebook group and take the poll on that. Venom's PG-13. Joaquin Phoenix Joker pictures. Let me know, guys, what you think. And I'll be back in a couple days with hopefully some more news. Tomorrow is comic book day, guys. So if nothing else, I'll talk about that on Thursday. And that's it. Go out. Enjoy the day. And, of course, I'll be outside drinking some beers if you want to come join me. Until then, may the force be with us all.